Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of the Autism and, and Doctor Who series, um, which we're going to be doing this month. And, and today I'm joined with Liam and it's going to be an awesome chat today. We're going to be talking a lot about Doctor Who, um, why we like the show, what we think. Um, and yeah, Liam, thank you for, for coming on today. No worries, mate. No worries. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm Liam. Um, so I'm at Liam.clear on TikTok. I have 84,000 followers. Um, and I've come on here today because I love Doctor Who. Uh, and Mason is a big fan and uh, I know that um, I definitely want to talk to him about it because I'm passionate about Doctor Who as well. So uh, yeah, it's brilliant to, to to be a part of this. Thank you for having me, mate. Thank you for like reaching out and everything like um, to ask to come on um, because I think um, Doctor Who, we could talk about Doctor Who all day, couldn't we? <laughs> we could. We literally had a conversation, uh, like a half hour phone call before we did this, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. were literally talking so much about Doctor Who and it got to the point where we were like, oh, we should probably stop talking about Doctor yeah. Who right now because yeah. we won't have anything to talk about on the podcast. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> It is, it, it, yeah, basically, um, we just thought we'd come on here and do it, didn't we? Yeah, it's got to be done, hasn't it? <laughs> it has um, got to be done. It has got yeah. to be done. Um, so, so Liam, where, with Doctor Who, where, when did you start watching it, um, like Doctor Who? Oh, so, I watched Doctor Who since I was about oh, four, I must have been about four years old. So, I remember I, I'd uh, come home, well, I'd be, I'd do a club or something on a Saturday. And I'd come home and Doctor Who would be on like prime time television on Saturday night. I'd watch around with my family. Uh, so I started watching around the time of like David Tennant. So the series that I remember first is the third series um, yeah. with Martha and uh, David Tennant as the Doctor. And then um, obviously from there, I've just carried on watching it. But then I've gone back and watched all the Christopher Eccleston. I haven't watched much of Classic Who, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, but New Who, I've, I've, you know, I've watched every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. I haven't watched any of the um, the old ones like the, like um, before Christopher Eccleston. Um, I suppose because I wasn't born at that age, at that time. Um, yeah. Also, also I don't know. I feel like because of how good the CGI and everything is now. I mean, it's Doctor Who. It's always a bit of fun, isn't it? But I think like if I was to go back and watch like monsters with bubble wrap all over them, I'd be a bit like, oh, do you know what I mean? Um, when the when the um, they didn't have much resources to build a good costume. Do you know what I mean? So I'd be a bit. Oh. I do. I do get asked, or, or, or people say that you, you should go watch, um, like, 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 a, a, like some of the, the good episodes they had. Um, I know, like, um, person mentioned like Ace is one of the best companions, and of course, like seeing that trailer and, and seeing Ace in it. Um, of course, I don't know her that well because uh, I yeah. watched Classic Who um, and but it, it's going to be nice just to see old companions maybe coming back and stuff but um, I do think to myself should I maybe watch an episode of Ace into, into the Classic Who because she's coming into the next episode I mean maybe I might have to as well because when I saw the I mean I recognised her because I watched like theory videos and stuff and lots of um, Doctor Who uh, content so I, I do recognise her and I know that she is ace so when I saw her in the trailer and Tegan is it as well yeah that's it. Uh, in, the, in the upcoming trailer um I was like oh who's I was like who's this person uh oh what's happened here can you still see me yeah I can see you oh there we go sorry sorry, sorry <laughs> popped up on my, on my lap. um no so when I when I first watched it I sort of I knew who they were but I wasn't fully aware of them as a character and I know that Ace is meant to be one of the best companions but I feel like I don't know I feel like bringing them back and they're meant to be that good is that a wise idea I don't know but I guess we'll talk about that in a bit but yeah yeah because I did actually see a couple of things I, I, like like with Tegan and and stuff because um everyone knows who Ace is but people maybe not know as much Tegan who, who she is and and mm. I saw that with the Doctor um like she kind of abandoned the doctor a little bit. Like she didn't want to travel with them, and then when the doctor flew away, she she kind of a second thought. Um, so it's going to be interesting, and I don't want the episode to have these characters in it, and you don't see a lot of them in the episode. Yeah, I think um, didn't with Ace. I can't remember. I, I don't know about Tegan, but with Ace's character, I know that because of the series getting cut and the, and the show getting stopped. Hmm. Um, didn't they just, didn't her, her, her character just get abandoned? Yeah, I think they just yeah. walked off, I think, on that episode, I believe. Like, and yeah, and then it stopped and then we never heard of her again. 
Yeah. Um, well, then, then the film came out with uh, Paul McGann, and then yeah. it sort of. I, I I haven't seen the film again, so I, I don't know. Um, but I know she's not in that, and it's just completely scrapped, isn't it? So it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to see them back, though. It's nice, I think, when returning characters come back, if if it's done well. And if it's Chibnall writing it, I mean, I, d I don't know. I don't know. No, it's, it's going to be... Um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting how it all works out um, for this finale um, and and the next series as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's going to be... It's going to be interesting, but like we all get excited for something and then uh, we get... We maybe feel a bit down when when it's not as good yeah. as we hope. That's the trouble. That's the trouble with Doctor Who now. Even though, like, don't get me wrong, I love this. So I have loved the show since I was, as I mentioned earlier, um, since I was a boy. And growing up, watching Christopher Eccleston, David Tennant, Matt Smith, they were like the ones for me, like the Doctors. Um, I sort of stopped watching it when Capaldi came along, but I rewatched them since, and he's a really good Doctor. But ever since, and I'm not looking on Jodie Whittaker's acting because I'm sure she's a lovely. But I just, I just can't get on board with her Doctor or the writing. Um, I feel like there's no with Capaldi. You see, he's got development. He starts off as a moody old man, and then he becomes quite warming. Uh, and we get to, I mean, I just don't see any character. There's nothing going for Jodie or her companions. So I get myself hyped up that this is going to change. Like. After the timeless child ending, I was like, "What's this?" And then I got hyped for the flux, and then it ended badly again. And I got hyped for the sea devils, and it was rubbish. Let's be honest; it, it wasn't very good. Um, yeah. And I'm getting hyped for this. I think the trailers. I think well, after watching the sea devil episode, the trailers were was more of the talking point than the actual episode. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. The episode was garbage. Like, do you know what I mean? It was rubbish. Um, I just can't get on board with it, and I, I'm there continually to like hyping myself up, hoping it'll be a better episode, and it never is. So, no. goodbye, Chibnall. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, it'd be nice. Russell T. Davis comes in, forgets everything that's happened in this era of Doctor Who. Um, mm. um, although I, I love Jodie, I, I think she's a brilliant actor and everything, and um, I do like her Doctor in a way. Like I always like her. She's the first woman to be a doctor. Um, yeah. Um, uh, even though, it, for for everybody, it's, it's a different experience than we normally used to. Um, but it's good that she took on the role because it is hard. Like we watch Doctor Who and we think, oh, well, we sit back and we, and we watch it, and it's like they, it's an easy thing for us to do that. But for the actors, it must be very hard for them because they are taking on an awful lot of lines as well as as playing that main part as the doctor. I think I think um, yeah I agree. I think Jodie's acting is brilliant, um, but I just as like I said, I don't think she has much to work with at all. Mm. Uh, her, I mean, her first series there was no, you know how there's always like an overarching story in every there series. Wasn't, there wasn't, there was no story. Nothing, and it, I just there's nothing for her to work with, it, and I just I just I never forget the line. And I think the one line that I just thought, well, I don't like this doctor at all. And I don't necessarily think it's Jodie's fault, but. I remember Graham uh, in the second series comes to her and says, look, I've, I'm worried my cancer's going to come back. And she's just like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to do about that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and the doctor's not like that. Like, and she's like, oh, I don't know how to deal with emotions or whatnot. But like, someone just comes to you with cancer and that's a sit like, you know, that's a serious thing. And she's completely mm -hmm. just debunked that. And that's not her fault. Cause obviously that's the writing, but I just think what, I, I just can't get on board with it at all. Yeah, I, I think that um, yeah, I, I, I was a bit upset by that. Like, 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 and although although it is a program, but they talk about serious things, like in, in the show, like you, you talk about serious topics, like how what their life is and and stuff, and like it's almost like she gets more upset about them leaving than mm. going having cancer. Um, yeah. and. It's, it's weird because even though Doctor Who is, you know, it's meant to be a, a, a kid's sort of sci-fi show when it was designed and whenever it was, um, it was always meant to be sort of, you know, for kids, but it's also meant to be a, a grown up. And I know that's why I like Russell T. Davis's writing is because he argues, although the show is for younger audiences, 
they have to they have to, you know it's like they have to learn stuff and it, and it helps them grow up because there's some grown up content in there do you know what i mean yeah. um and i think that's what made doctor who so great in the russell t davis era and it's just all i feel like it's very um who based at children now do you know what i mean yeah they're like because if you watch Joe's Zero, you, you really don't have to watch any of the other Doctor Who episodes before, do you? Mm-hmm. Like, say, if you watch one, like, like the first series or, or something, or it doesn't even have to be the first series of her era, like, you can watch the last episode of the season, then <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered if you watched the rest. No, 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 it wouldn't have mattered at all. Not at all. It's, but um, it is, um, like, it is, it comes to at this point in the show, which, um, where you think this is the last shot of it. Like, Russell T. Davis comes back. It's last hope, really, isn't it? Like, um, really, because, like, even, like, seeing this with the current, what's going on, and then you do fear, I think many people will fear, it's not talked about a lot in, I think, the Doctor Who community and and stuff, because they don't want to talk about it. They don't want it to happen. They don't want the show to get acts off the television which is a fearful thing now because if Russell T Davis season doesn't go well you think well what's going on from here um is it going to continue I think I think bringing Russell T Davis back is a great move because and I also like the fact that the BBC have um have have sort of allowed them to take control allowed well Bad Wolf Studios to take control of the series and given full sort of um guidance to Russell T Davis and how to move forward what worries me about it is and I, I love Russell T Davis I'm so glad he's coming back but after he leaves what's going to happen then mm. is it it's just going to be a continuing cycle of is the show going to downfall and then they're going to bring someone else back and do you know what I mean like it's worrying that if his seasons don't go well what is the BBC going to do then uh because I'll, I'll be honest after watching the new series I have fell out of love with the show I, I, obviously, I watched back David Tennant. Um, I'm in love with it again. It's brilliant. But hmm. but when it comes to uh, watching Jodie's, it's just not the same anymore. And it something needs to change. I think the BBC made a good decision. But it's just worrying what will happen after and if the show will be discontinued or when it will be discontinued. You know, I feel the show needs to stop heading to the, looking at the past. It's the thing that has been going on for a while um, because especially like these last years now like because they say like because David Tennant's my favourite doctor I, I, I love him and, and stuff but we need to stop mentioning nah. last doctors don't we? We, we, we we need to go through the forward and like I know we had him back for the 50 and everything but he looks, he looks older uh, an older actor now um, and people um, rumours of the 14th doctor is like, like it's not we want new things we don't want always going back do we yeah i think it's uh yeah i agree with that to an extent i feel like it's a lot of fan service so like with chris chib he's just trying to get people on his side if he bring because there's rumors all these um old doctors are going to come back like peter davidson and stuff but if peter davidson come, does come back he is not going to look the same is he like he's, he's older it, it won't work as well and i think the show's past and history is very important to the show but the show is about moving on don't get me wrong I would love for David Tennant to come back for specials and I would watch yeah. him again happily and you know it would just be like watching him as a kid like, I remember the 50th anniversary that was brilliant to see them back on the screens both Matt Smith and David Tennant my favourite doctors yeah um, but the show is about moving on so I think if they were to bring back like David Tennant for series would it be the same I don't know would it kill the legacy of who he was as the 10th doctor I, I don't know it, it, it's it's um, I think I don't think they're going to go that way. I think Russell T Davis understands that the show moves on and the character regenerates. But I I think he's I'd love it if what he did was he started off his specials, his 60th anniversary specials, with just like three or four episodes of like four different Doctors, all in their own adventures, and it would just bring us back to those days. Do you know what I mean? And get yeah. audiences back in. Yeah. That's what I thought. Like, I, 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 I like having like a, a mini series or so, or like for the week of November when it, it would be the 60th, like um anniversary. Um, I think, and I did a, uh, and like because like in the community, like I found because like the podcast, like doing it about autism uh, and stuff. I found a lot of people who have autism but love the show, and I like I would love actually an autistic actor 
to to be the doctor or something or uh, yeah. like I feel like it's doctor could be really accepting and like like with like with Ryan that talked about raising awareness of his dyspraxia even though the character was not used as much really yeah. um and that that wasn't his fault that was the scripts and because there was too many too many in the TARDIS wasn't it like we need at least one max possibly two that's enough to be in the TARDIS yeah I think there were so many people in that um in that TARDIS team in the fam <laughs> I, I didn't like that word no, <laughs> no I, I, just, I just um no it, there was too many people in the TARDIS then and it works for like two people or one person but when it's free it, it just got too messy and and even then, so even though we have had Yaz, who is the long, she's my least favourite companion, I just, I'm sorry, mm. I just completely can't stand her. Um, she has been in the show as the longest running companion in New Who. And I don't care about her. I don't feel like I know much about her. I feel um, Doctor Who inclusive, inclusivity, incl I don't know how to say Yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. How, yeah. how like Doctor Who includes like, LGBTQ plus sort of things, and I, I think that's brilliant. I think it, I think it's great, even from the very start with Captain Jack Harkness. You know, yeah. um, I think it's brilliant. But I feel like uh, a lot of writing is forced upon us now, and I have no problem. I mean, I'm not a fan of Doctor companion relationships. I like Doctor and Rose because that was like they, they had an actual connection. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. And like Doctor and River, you know, that had been working for so long, and I, I felt they had a connection. And I don't have anything against it being a, um, a gay relationship at all. I just, I think it's pushed upon us and it's come around so quickly. And I don't know much about Yaz to Things care. It's rushed, yeah. It's rushed in and it's like, um, and Yaz, there's this, there's this factor of Yaz where every companion makes out that she's brilliant. Oh, and she's like, when Dan said in series 13, he's like, oh, she's brilliant. She is brilliant. And like Bradley Walsh, when he said in the 12th series, he's like, Oh, I've never met a bet like a better person than you. I I have in that show. I've met several people, oh, thousands of people who are better than her in the show. She doesn't. It, nothing. She doesn't prove any. I don't know. I don't. I don't get her, and I don't. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I I agree. Like to a certain extent, yeah. Because I like I I love what they do. Um, like with the um. With the different communities and raising that acceptance and awareness yeah. and is which what I love to do and uh, quite a lot of people like to do is just raise awareness and then knowing that a certain show that does that and like um learning about different things as well but um I do agree like because with Ten and Road that that was that connection there yes and the Doctor it, it seems really rushed there's only cut last couple of episodes it really got into that kind of concept if anything if, anything, if I'd have seen it before I'd have thought that um the 13th doctor didn't reciprocate those feelings because he always seems awkward yeah like, I, it doesn't seem to me that um that they they have a connection it just seems so like i mean you sort of saw it through season 13 a little bit how yaz sort of had feelings for the doctor but it was only all of a sudden it was pushed upon us in the um and that's not enough time do you know what i mean i, I don't feel that's enough time to establish a relationship and to yeah, yeah, and then the doctor said, uh, "I would do, I would, but I can't." Um, didn't she? Um, yeah, I think that's. I think that's the um, that's the great thing about about Doctor Who as well is the is the the humanity of the Doctor and how the Doctor knows that that she that she can't ever have long connections with people because the do the Doctor's nature is moving on and moving around the world and the universe and 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 also the the um the, the the fact that she can live for a very long time for hundreds and thousands of years you know what i mean so um mm. yeah i think i think that's i think that's a big factor but i i mean yeah in general i'm just not as not as keen on this uh 13 doctor sort of these seasons i haven't liked them at all really yeah which is well, a shame yeah let's yeah. hope it all it's all going to be good so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, do you feel the same a little bit? I I yeah, I like I've noticed and, and one thing for me, I love the I love Murray Gold and the music that we had. Oh, um oh. and now it's not gone, it's almost like they all stopped everything when 
the new Doctor, the new producers and everything, and new scripts, and I got, I suppose, annoyed because, like, you kind of get, like, the chills, don't you, when you hear that music at any time, like, that, that Murray Gold music, and... Wait, okay, which song, which Murray Gold song gives you the most chills? At the moment, uh, I, I always listen to the same one, uh, and it, I like Dazzling End, um, at the moment which I'm, I'm, I'm listening to and mm. um yeah I, I love them all but especially the 10th Doctor's soundtrack were the the best in my opinion I love the Matt Smith ones as well um mm. um when David left I didn't think another Doctor could be as good as him um but then when Matt Smith came, I thought he's just as good <laughs> um yeah, as, yeah. as David I think my favorite Doctor Who song is is the tenth Doctor's theme, mm. uh, and this is Gallifrey. Oh, oh yeah, I, I I love that one. Um, uh, like especially um, when um, I think it was the last of the Time Lords. They played that right at the end, didn't they? Um, mm. which is like in, in an upsetting scene as well, making that still iconic. Um, as well. Yeah, um, agreed. Yeah. What what um. With um, like the, do you have any favourite episodes in particular that you that you've seen? Oh, I mean, I am biased because Tenant is my favourite. Um, oh, it's a good question. I think I love the Family of Bloods and Human Nature. They they're just amazing. I think that the fact that you know I was saying how the Doctor can't have that humanity a second ago. Yeah, yeah. Actually, gave the Doctor that humanity, um, and that was brilliant to watch. That was brilliant. Um. And Waters of Mars. Waters of Mars is just amazing. And that gives me chills. The music, everything in that gives me chills. Um, you know, and he's like, oh, I'm going to win. I'm like, oh, my God. Go on, Tennant. Go on. Yeah, it was just Brilliant. one of his last what episodes, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I love all those episodes that you yeah, said. Yeah. What, what about you? What's, what's... My favourite episode is, is under Tennant as well. Um, and... I just got to be um, the girl in the fireplace. Is that 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 is my one of my favorite episodes um, because I love yeah. the music in it as well. Um, like um, I love all the lines. I, I love that. Like it's it's similar to in a way. It, it, in a way, it's similar to the, like when the Doctor being human because he does feel that to Madame de Pompadour, um, and yeah. it almost like they have in that at forty five minutes more of a connection than the Doctor, 30 Doctor, and yes, have a nearly three series. Um, so... Yeah. That I'll was, get you. That was... Um, yeah, I, I like that episode. Um, I like the, the Vasta Narado, um, the two-parter. Uh, oh, I Silence think. Narado. Yeah. That, That's brilliant. They're both great episodes, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's really interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and like when the doctor left, like tenth doctor, like um, what was you feeling like when he was that scene, like that re regeneration? Old oh, regeneration scene with the tenth yeah. doctor. Yeah. Uh, oh, as a little kid, I was crying. I, I was a mess. I can't lie. When he um, oh, when he left, it was um. It was really sad. I remember watching like an announcement he did online of um, him saying that he wasn't going to play the Doctor anymore. It was like an awards thing. I was really sad. And then they played like um, when it came round to it after the Waters of Mars and then it came to the last two episodes. And he was like, I don't want to go. And the way that he went round to all the companions, I really enjoyed that. A lot of people don't like that for some reason because they say all the other Doctors didn't get the chance. But I think it's nice to just look back at everyone who made his Doctor and then... Um, yeah. Oh, that last line, I don't want to go, is just perfect. And then all the CGI and all the special effects and all the um, things that we use is just amazing. What, like, um, like because Matt Smith, that he, as a Doctor, was just as good uh, as Matt, uh, as David, sorry. Um, what was your most favourite, maybe, episode under Matt Smith, do you think? Um... A good man goes to war. Yeah, I think was my is my favorite. And uh, oh, um, I really like the eleventh hour as well. 
he had some really good episodes as well. I'd have to, I can't think off the top of my head, but I know a good man comes to war. That stands out how, how powerful he is. Um, and I don't like the Rings of Akaten uh, episode much, but I love the speech in it. The speech in that. I mean, it just goes to show his acting ability, really. Um, he's fantastic. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah, I do love that speech. And I would say he's one of my favourite episodes, just really down to that speech, I guess. Um, yeah. Under Matt. But I did like... Um, I did, I did like the silence, even though they were the skid. The, they did scare me. <laughs> um, oh yeah, they scared me as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a shame we haven't seen them really much. Um, the silence. Yeah, I think I think Doctor Who has a problem of of using uh, quite a lot of that, like reusing a lot of um, enemies and monsters too much. I think the Weeping Angels. I really liked actually. I did like the Flux episode with the angels. I think yeah. that was the best. I think that was the best Weeping Angels episode after Blink. But I feel like they're overused a lot. They were overused. Uh, they should have just been left alone. I think a lot of um, animals. I was going to say creatures and aliens should be left alone afterwards. I think the Silence had a good run, and they were you. And then I think I feel like now, had the, it would be nice to see them return in the future. Um, but I'd say give it like another five, ten years or something to give to bring back that novelty. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like. It, it it will take time to uh to bring back what we had because it's been it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I think uh well hopefully it will come sooner than we think. Hopefully the music will kick in because they're saying Murray Gold and everything's gonna return um as well with Russell T. Davis, which would just be amazing. Uh I'm not I'm not a fan of the new music now. Like I don't like the the, the theme, you know, like the starting theme as yeah. well. It's just same. I don't think there's no TARDIS in it, which is just weird to me. Yeah, um, I don't really like the TARDIS. Don't even TARDIS really. Um, it's not my favourite. Yeah, no, Thirty no. TARDIS isn't the best either. Even though I do like the colour, I like the yellow in it, but it's just not. Um, yeah. Alien, is it? <laughs> not really. No, no. And I don't know what happened? What happened? I did like the episode of actually Andrew Matt Smith when they had to go into the TARDIS a lot. They spent the whole entire episode in the TARDIS. Journey, in journey into the centre of the TARDIS. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, that was it. And yeah, that was a good episode. That was um, that was a really good episode. I enjoyed. There's a few. I really oh the bells of Saint John. I really enjoyed the Wi-Fi one. Oh yeah. Oh, they, when he went up the shard, that was literally. Yeah. I was like, that yeah. gave me chills. That did like him going up the shard. And, and then he's not really in the shot, he's at the computer, which was awesome. Yeah, another good, yeah. This is Stephen Wright, um, Stephen writing? Stephen Moffat's writing, I think is brilliant, as well as Russell T. Davis. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah we, it, it's a shame that we can't just say, um, look, we're not going to be as bothered who the next writer is if we don't know who they are. Um, yeah. But this is why Russell T. Davis is back, because the show is not, since he left, or... Stephen Moffat left have not been the high standard that Doctor Who should be. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Chibnall understands Doctor Who. I don't think he understands it. There's, have you seen the clip of him online where he's like, um, he's like, oh, it's writing of Doctor Who. It's not as good as it used to be. Um, did you see? Have you ever seen that? This was ages ago when he was younger. I know that he has done a couple in the past, like episodes in Doctor Who. Oh um, yeah, but he doesn't. I just don't think he he understands. I don't think he gets it. I just don't think he gets it. Don't get me wrong. He's done some good other series other than Doctor. Oh, <laughs> uh, Church is yeah, good, but that yeah. but that might be because he's got two good actors on board. But yeah, uh, um, and quite a lot of them were from Doctor Who. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. No, Torchwood. Um, some of the episodes he did for Torchwood were all right. It's like he can understand an older audience, but when he's trying to write kid stuff, he's trying to make Doctor Who more kid friendly. Like it just doesn't. He did a, a Cyberman woman episode, I believe, in Torchwood. Um, yes, that was, and that was. A, I mean, it's a bit rushed, but it was. It was good. The stakes were good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was a bit um, odd though, like just to do an episode about that. <laughs> do, you, um, do, you enjoy, do you enjoy Torchwood and everything? I do, but. I got on, it. It was good and all, but they just killed everyone off. <laughs> um, near enough. Um, I 
I love Children of Earth. That was amazing. Oh yeah, I did like that one. Children of Earth is brilliant. I do like the theme. I do like the theme of Torchwood though, like the intro and, and everything. I think it's it's quite yeah. good. Like, yeah, no. like, and it like it, if you watch shows, like if it, maybe I catch up, most people skip the intros and, and stuff. But if it's like show like Doctor Who, I will watch it because I just like watching the intro and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, I did I, I did like the Sarah Jane Adventures. I think. They, oh, they were good. That was good. When I was when I was little as well, and you were watching Sarah, that that was amazing. I did love the Sarah Jane Adventures as well. They were good. Yeah, it's like they could bring all this stuff back. Like even I think with Russell back, he will do something that maybe like that another side show. Um, yeah, which would he be... wants to make it like he wants to make it like Marvel, doesn't he? In sense, he wants like a universe of Doctor Who. That would be good. We have it like on Disney Plus or something, like a yeah. movie series. Um, Put it on BBC iPlayer, I don't know. <laughs> what What would you be your thoughts? So let's say we're going to have a series fourteen, and uh, we are going to have series fourteen. What would you be your thoughts? Not to do the whole series in one go. Maybe do it like different parts in the year, like continue and uh, continue on from the same series. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I just want it to. Well, first I want it to be better, um, which I think it will be. I think we can all hope it can be. Um, would be nice. It would be nice to have it split. I remember that uh, Stephen Moffat did it. He split it up and it made us want more. But I would just like a whole like I want the thirteen episodes back. If you want to, I want the whole thirteen episodes back, not the six episodes or the ten like with Jodie's. I want the whole thirteen back, um, like they used to, um, and have you know some side stories. But I, I'd like a site like a like an overall plot like they normally do in each series, like the crack in the wall and. Um, oh yeah, that was uh, good. That was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would see all that sort of stuff. I love the the, the mystery of Doctor Who. Um, I think if they were to bring you know that sort of stuff back and have a thirteen episode series again and specials, Christmas specials, Christmas, not New Year. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, it has to be Christmas. Like New Year's, um, I'm not as even though I don't have like any of really the New Year's ones that they've done. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. The New Year ones, I, they don't work. They don't get the audiences in. Where Christmas ones were just brilliant. Yeah, were, yeah. Like you'd, it's like a special occasion, isn't it? Like you just sit around telly, watch it. Um, even though Christmas Day is a busy day, like uh, maybe New Year's Day isn't as busy. Maybe <laughs> that's, that's why they maybe they thought oh, we have maybe more yeah. people watching it. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? It's odd, but. Um, they yeah. purpose. I think Stephen Moffat wrote in that he was meant to regenerate in the Cyberman one at the end of series thirteen, uh, series ten, not series thirteen. Uh, Capaldi was meant to regenerate then. But I think Stephen Moffat purposely made the Christmas special to keep the Christmas specials running, and then they cut it. So they made uh, Twice Upon a Time, so Capaldi's Doctor, you know, could have could regenerate on Christmas. Yeah, like I did. Um, Capaldi as a doctor wasn't my most favourite. Um, no. um, he got his last season was his best. Um, I think his I think his first season was the best. Yeah, I might, yeah, I think his first season was. But then you know, I, I think he, I like the episodes best in that. Hmm. He did have some good episodes, but straight he did really his first episode. Um, it took him too long to discover he was a doctor, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Spent a, a whole episode, like, like with the Christmas invasion, which I feel like is the best Doctor Who Christmas episode, in my opinion. Um, mm. I, um, yeah. Even though, even though his end of time ones, part one and part two, even though you didn't really want to watch it because you know he's going to leave. Um, mm. But they were so good. Um they were, they were really... you know, they weren't my favourite ones, the end of time part one and two. It wasn't the best episode Moffat ever wrote. Um I think my favourite Christmas episode, either Voyage of the Damned or Runaway Bride. Oh yeah. I like there's there's so many good ones, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many good episodes, but you feel like with this the potential regeneration later this year it's not going to be at new year or, or christmas so it's going to be it's going to be curious what they're going to do about that are they going to skip it this year um 
I'm no, just... it's meant to be revealed very soon. It might even by the time this is released, we're gonna know who the fourteenth Doctor is. Yeah, yeah, like because yeah, this was gonna be released in like August time, so it's, it is gonna be interesting. But the thing yeah, is, I'm I don't want to know who it is. I don't want to know who the Doctor is. I don't know about you. It'd be so much better if we didn't know because, well, it, it, because just, just kept it quiet and then just did it and showed us on the day. Yeah, because. He's known for doing that before, isn't he? With um, Captain Jack, with Ace and Tegan were kept quiet. So um, mm-hmm. it would be interesting rather than that. I don't know. I think it would be. Yeah, I agree with you. It would be the mystery would be good, but at the same time, I just want to know. I, I yeah. just want to. Yeah. Wait, I want to know the actor so I can see if they're good or not. Um, to see if you know if they're uh, if they'll be a good doctor. Yeah, it's oh. gonna be. So interesting, isn't it? We can only pray. Yeah, because I want to know who it is, like like you. But at the same time, I would rather wait because we haven't done that, have that experience before. Like, if we were to wait. We could, uh, like, even it even strikes me if we don't find out, we either will find out in the regeneration scene, or she won't regenerate. Well, she will, but we won't see who the actor is. Um, yeah. That will get moved on maybe to the possibility of a 60th episode or a Christmassy one, New Year's one, um, which I think it'd be nicer once maybe not to have it on a Christmas episode maybe or a New Year's episode, just do it like that. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Uh, do you know, if they just had a complete surprise and they didn't even reveal that Jodie was leaving or anything, they just did it on the spot and we were all like, what? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It would be good. Would be like, good. When, like when David Tennant that time, um, it was I think it was um, Star on Earth. Um, yeah. He regenerated. Oh, I, think. Yeah. I thought, wait, what? He regenerated? No, um, I thought he did not regenerate now. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. Yeah, but that was yeah, that was interesting because like having a couple of the companions in the TARDIS as well, how upset they were um, to see yeah. he was regenerating and um, he. He stays the same, and he has a human. That 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 that, that like with the Russell T. Davies coming back and, and the series he wants to do. It'd be nice if we have even you can have David Tennant back because he can be as old as he can be as the human version of him. Um, yeah, yeah. Can he? So he could be in that parallel world with Rose still, um, and they've grown older. So they could do a story about that, can they? Yeah, exactly. They could. I think they could do. Thing is, Doctor Who, there's so much they could explore. There's so many un- un- unanswered questions that they can go over and and add more universes to them. They definitely can easily. Yeah. Um, oh, I think it's yeah. That's why I love the show. It's because there's so many open opportunities with it. What would you do? Here's a question. What would you do if you were the showrunner? What would be your next story arc? What would you want to happen? I would. I'll tell you what I wouldn't do to start with, and then I'll tell you what I would do. What okay. I wouldn't do, I would scrap Gallifrey altogether um, because I'm bored of the storyline. It gets killed, it's back, it kills, it's back, it kills, it's back. Yeah. Um, and I would also get rid of the Master for a while. Um, oh, yeah, the Master's um, got to... Um, even yeah. though I love him, like I love the, 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 the Master currently because he has Crohn disease, as, so, as so do I. Um, and oh, yeah, oh. He, he's got Crohn's, and like um, I, I love him for that. And I, like he, he was up That's there with Sasha yeah. Dewan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he's an ambassador for Crohn's in Colitis UK. Um, oh. and I, I love him for that. And although John, John Sim is one of my all-time favorites as well, but yeah, I, I love um, I, 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 I love Sasha. Like Missy got time to get used to, but I think she's good as well. Um, um, but um. I like the the term of master, not Missy. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, like, I like um, I think they're all. I think all the masters we've had knew who were really, really good. Yeah. I yeah. really like. I don't think Johnson's my favorite, but I love the how dark Sasha Dewan is and how like how angry he can get and just how yeah. you know. I like that about him. Yeah, yeah, He's really good. yeah, and I love that about him. And like those are things that I would change. I know they have to. Unless they change that thing with the Daleks, I, don't, I think they've got like um, a deal with them or something, don't they? That they have to use the Daleks each series, um, so they can't I, not use them. But not as much would be nice. <laughs> I'd love for them not for them not to use the Daleks. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I like yeah. So 
that's one thing I wouldn't do. I would, like, I not have them, but the things that I would do is I, I being a showrunner, <laughs> it'd be yeah. nice to be a showrunner just to write the show, wouldn't it? Um, what I would do is I would, um, I would do, um, I would do a similar story, uh, maybe based around the, the first episode of the next series. Um, I wouldn't even have the Doctor in it. I would make the fans wait. I wouldn't have the Doctor in for at least the first episode. Um, a whole storyline about um, just about like new people, like um, like a, maybe a new companion, um, just about more about their background. Because as soon as we normally when we got a new companion, we're used to not knowing about anything about them, are we? And then they no. just say, "Yep." Yeah. And then the Doctor asks them, "Do you want to come and meet the TARDIS?" He said, "Yep." Yeah. We don't know anything about the companion at all. So that's what I would do um, straight away. Yeah. And then we will gradually, we're, we're going to know who the Doctor is, like, and then the next episodes after that. So that's what I would do. A whole episode yeah. about it. Um, not fighting, well, you could not um, have any, any encounters, really, just knowing what they are, history of them. And yeah, mm. that's what I would do. That sounds good. I think if I, if I was showrunner, I would... I, mean, I don't know what I, I, I agree with you in the sense I wouldn't include Gallifrey. Gallifrey stories need to go now. You could include it as a planet. Yeah, yeah. Back to, but not not a story about it getting blown. I'd leave the master. I'd ask for the Daleks to be left for at least two series because they are just so overused. The Cybermen are so overused. Well, they weren't really, but now in Chibnall's era, they are again. Yeah. Um, oh, I would. I don't know. I would want a reboot of it, just a new, a complete new storyline, but not about the Doctor's timeless child or about Gallifrey. It would, it would probably be. Oh, do you know what? I couldn't tell you. It, there's so many things you could do with it. Um, what are your thoughts of the do- since New Who? Every uh, Barry Crystal Eccleston, of course. Every Doctor doing yeah. three series. Everyone's done three series. What's your thoughts about that? I like it. I think it's a nice amount of time and then you move on and then it's someone else. I I think, I don't know, I'm glad people are saying, oh, Jodie should have another series, but no, 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 she shouldn't because the three series are up. I feel like it's a nice, a nice amount of time to have with somebody and then they go. Um, I think the only reason somebody could have more is if they are really demanded like David Tennant and people actually love them and the viewing figures are good. Why shouldn't they stay on a little bit longer? Um, yeah. I, I think I think, I think it works. I think it works. I think it keeps with the tradition because a lot of old, um, old Doctor Who, in, in in classic Doctor Who, they had three series as well, and then they left. I'm not. I think Tom Baker had like seven. I think it was. Yeah, he did have quite. I think he had the most. I think Tom Baker. Yeah, he um, had the most series. Yeah, and he was like the David Tennant of the classic Who, wasn't he? Like, um, he was the most liked. I think out, out of all yeah. of them. Um, but I think for a lot of actors, it's just it's just a case of not falling out and falling out of love with the show. Mm. I think if you if you like David Tennant said he left at the right time because he didn't want to fall out of love with it. Peter Capaldi said he'd never leave if he didn't leave then. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. I think it's nice. I think it's a nice continuation, really, of three series thing. Yeah, yeah. What do you what's your thoughts on the trailers at the end of an episode? Do you feel they should keep that, or do you feel they should get rid of it? Um, like at the end of an episode. Oh, the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next time, time trailer. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I should keep them. It keeps me excited for what's coming next week. What about you? Yeah, I, I um, I do like them, but at the same time, I, I feel like maybe but sometimes I should watch them just so I'm surprised for the next episode. Yeah, yeah. I think they uh, keeps me hooked though. When I saw the Weeping Angels in the next time trailer for the Flux, after watching a mediocre episode, I was like, oh, fourth episode gonna be good. Like, I'm it excited. I think one of our best ones, I'd say. Um, the yeah, I'd, it's the best ones. I'd say I love the one where the um, Jadoon one. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. And I really liked her first one I really enjoyed. Mm. And with the Joan Martin Doctor at the moment, what is your thoughts on her? I don't know much about her. <laughs> I <I've>... know. <laughs> I, I just I know that it's someone who the doctor can't remember. It's a doctor version, but I don't. We don't know much about. I do. We see a pop up like what like twice in the flux. Once. Yeah. We'll see a pop up again in the in the um, centenary special. Yeah. 
obviously, I, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know enough about her to 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 care. Again, I, I interesting, isn't it? Because how they going to sort of order them? Because there's too many of them, isn't there, to uh, to solve and, and end? Yeah, there's way too many. We say it, it has to be. It can't be an hour long episode or a forty five minute long episode. If it is. I'm just not going to look forward to it after all. They, they've got so much to talk about and so much to solve and put to bed before this era ends. And I don't feel any of it is going to get solved. I feel like it's just going to be left. Yeah. Uh, it's weird, really. I don't know. I hope I hope that it can get solved. In, but I just think it needs to be a long episode. It really needs to be. It does. Hmm. It, it really does, doesn't it? Because, like... Yeah, like 45 minutes, you're just not going to look forward to it because you feel like it's not enough. And it goes really fast as well. <laughs> uh, 45 minutes. The Sea Devils episode went super quick. Yeah. It went super quick. Which, yeah. I mean, I, I guess... For, I mean, I don't know. I don't feel it went quick because I enjoyed it, but I just think it went quite quick anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I agree. It needs to be needs to be changed. Well, they can't change the episode, but that they need to think about what they've done, if they think the viewers are enjoying it, are they going to continue watching it? Um, are, are viewers going to go back to that episode in years to come? Probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> um, like, I probably won't go to many episodes of this current era um, because I don't obviously enjoy much of them. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't get much enjoyment out of it. If I was to be a new viewer and I was to watch Doctor Who now, I wouldn't understand anything yeah because i don't, I, I know some people who just i've stopped watching it um yeah because of how it is now and um i it's it's annoying but like it's gonna be it's something that we we're gonna look forward to whoever the new doctor is like um and we'll still watch it even if it's not great <laughs> when we yeah i'll still watch it and hope that we we got a we got a hope, haven't we? Yeah, we've got to pray. We've got a hope, Liam, haven't we? Um, we have made. Like with um, with Doctor Who, like um, ha have you been to any um, like locations or anything like where they film episodes? Yeah, so I I go to uni in Cardiff, so I'm very lucky in the sense that I I I'm I'm in, in Cardiff now. I'm in my house in Cardiff. And there's so many Doctor Who filming locations. There's Torchwood, Torchwood, uh, Cardiff Bay. Uh, there's so many places you walk past. Go, I recognise that. That's from Doctor Who. Uh, Penarth is nearby. That's where they had the Sarah Jane house, which I've been to. Um, been to quite a few. It's nice to look back at all these places and think, oh wow, that's uh, that's that's where that's been filmed. That's where David Tennant once stood, or something, or John Barrowman. I've been very lucky. I've met John Barrowman. He's one of the nicest people. Yeah. Uh, and we had a great conversation about Doctor Who, and uh, I, I'm very fortunate to have met him. Um, I think doing TikTok gave, gave me that opportunity, which is really nice. But I mean, I just I, I I just love looking back at all these amazing places, especially being in Cardiff, where it's the heart of it is filmed. It's still filmed now. Like I'm down the road from Bad Wolf Studios, where they're filming currently. Um, and it's just great. It's great. You can. Um, I've actually walked past um, Cardiff Castle once. And they were filming uh, a scene where Dan, D um, John Bishop was there. You could see him and he was chopping. It was a scene in, the, it was the fifth episode of The Flux. And he was chopping down these things trying to make this sign. Okay. Um, trying to make paint on the, uh, on the grass and everything. Painting on the... Do so you remember that scene? They were doing that, and it was John Bishop filming there. I do um, remember they were in the grass at one point. Yeah, um, chopping down like trees and stuff. It was trying to get the dog. Um, what what's it? Car? What's the dog called? I I can't remember. Carbon Easter. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, that's it. And they were trying to get um Carbon Easter's attention to put this um put this thing on the ground. They were trying to put so that he could see it. Oh yeah. It's like I do want to go. I, I do kind of plan to go to Cardiff this, this year if like everything's okay with with COVID. Of course, um, yeah. I will. I will go because I, there are locations I want to go. I, I want to go to where the place they filmed um, the the Gun the Fireplace episode. Um, that's like, yeah, that's about the gardens. 
Like they have yeah. the gardens place, don't you, in Cardiff Way? Um, I I want to go to the library. Um, well, where they done um so, the silence in the library and um, that's in yeah, that's in Swansea. That is yeah. that's actually in Swansea. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I I actually got my own little book. Um, and I, and I've put all the, the locations in it. So um, I do plan to go to a fair few places in Cardiff and and stuff because I've never been to Cardiff, but I know it's the it's the main probably place where they do film. Doctor mm-hmm. Who. Um, so it's something where I am very interested in going. I've been into I've been into Bad Wolf Studios as well, which is now where they film. But at the time they were doing his Dark Materials there. I'm actually not allowed to say what I saw because I had to sign a um, uh, and is it an NDA? So it basically say you can't talk about it. So I can't really talk about. It. I I went in there and it was a brilliant experience. So knowing that that's where they're filming Doctor Who gives me a lot of hope. Yeah. Uh, that's where the next it- season's. Me. did it look good did it yeah well this I, I mean i can't talk much about it but the sets and how everything's made in there um was fantastic bearing in mind this is like this is the place where james mcavoy and all these people film it is fantastic do you know what i mean he was in dark Material. i don't know if he's in this series i'm not sure but brilliant absolutely amazing to look, look and see where all these actors have been and where russell t oh, davis yeah. is now. james mcavoy is a very good actor <laughs> You seen his dark materials? Um, no, but I have seen um, I've seen him in lots of really good films, um, hmm. like Split. I think is, is one of them. Um, yeah, he's multiple personality yeah. disorder. Oh yeah, I, I, he's a very good actor, and I do feel he'd be very good as a doctor, even the master, really. Uh, <laughs> if they oh, want to bring back really, the master, he'd be really good. Yeah, and he's been in so many. He's hopefully going to be in the new, new Doctor Strange, and um, yeah. Is, as well, it's fantastic, really. Yeah, like it'd be nice, like like, like we speaking about Marvel earlier. That if they do, maybe like like um bring Doctor Who, bring Marvel into the Doctor Who universe, like Spider Man or or something like that. Sony now own. I swear they own Bad Wolf Studios or something. They own. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I saw Sony. So, I, 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 I saw like a meme of it. It was like Spider Man meeting the Doctor or something. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah. But obviously that. I, they probably will keep it separate but sony i like i love marvel movies but sony movies like about marvel aren't the best yeah because i just imagine the story like that spider-man just to save the day and then the doctor's already done it <laughs> and they said who are you and then they kind of probably are enemies or something oh, maybe <laughs> it's like it would be amazing. Oh. yeah um and even like iron man or like all stuff like even though like Iron Man could probably st- because like with Star Wars that's finished, they do that mm. kind of side thing. They couldn't even do the Iron Man thing because he's what happened in game. It's like kind of irrelevant to shows that he can do on his own. I find the character. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. It's brilliant, really. Yeah. Um, um, with um, so sorry. Um, what was that? I, I said they could do so much with the universe. Yeah, yeah. It's like. It'd be nice to explore more planets. Like, like I don't know if you agree with the current era of Doctor Who. It's more but land based, not as much in space. Yeah, it seems a lot of it's on Earth now. Yeah, um, a lot of Jodie's episodes have been on Earth, and I'd love them to go out in space and explore all these all these different planets. Yeah, um, great. But hopefully, I mean, hopefully they will. But we don't know. Yeah, it'd be nice. Like, like, like with the space is something that needs to be explored a lot more. Um, like they had some really good iconic episodes, the ones we've seen so far in space. So, mm. um, even though if you, I don't suppose you can count what happened in Flux, where the Doctor was stuck in space and and stuff, weren't she getting sucked in? But that that, that weren't as much. No, no, I can't think of any of the episodes that really in space. I mean, there was spacey bits, but there was no space. Uh, there was no actual bits where she was in space. No, was I think. It's gonna be, yeah, with like with the new era, which we'll be starting. Um, what are you most looking forward to? Would you say? Um, better everything. I, I just um, no, I don't know. Just a, a fresh, just a fresh face, a fresh doctor. I think. Fresh I think doctor. just a fresh, uh, a fresh take on it. It'd be something different. It gives us a bit of hope that things actually will change. Uh, it's just such a long wait, though. It's twenty twenty three, like September, and that's such a long time away. If you think about it, by the time we get our Spider Man game, 
not the new one. Uh, hopefully, oh, uh, it'll be out. <laughs> what were we saying about that? No. Yeah. What else will be But like, we have so much new Marvel stuff out. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know really. It's uh, it's 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 um, it's it's going to be a a lot of stuff, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'll be out by then. But I, I'm, I'm praying that uh, just a fresh face, just a fresh someone else to see to play the Doctor. I'm really excited for. I also, I really want to do that time fracture thing in London. Hmm. I haven't done it yet. Have yeah. you seen that advertised? Yeah, I have. Um, the thing is, the I, I would do it. Um, it's just because of my Crohn's making me really rumble to do stuff like that, and, and because there's really close contact and stuff in there. I, I do want to do it, but. I at the same time I, my health always comes first, so it is. Um, I I love it though. Um, it's something yeah, that yeah. I want to do. Um, hundred percent. That's that's understandable. Yeah, but with time fractures, it does look very interesting. It's kind of unity, isn't it? Like stuff. Yeah, it's based on unit. Yeah, I haven't really been to a Doctor Who experience since um since I was young. <laughs> um, yeah, Doctor Who, like um places not to experience i went to one in cardiff the one in cardiff before it closed i went to one in ills court in london um yeah it's yeah. brilliant it's really good um in the last episode of this series uh, i spoke to someone about dr who confidential and saying about that coming back would you agree would you like to see that back i'd love to see that back that'd be so much fun i loved watching them afterwards you'd flick over to bbc3 and see how the episode was made mm -hmm. i think that's brilliant i think it'd be really really good yeah Oh, it's it's missed, isn't it? Like just seeing the how they make all these kinds of stuff. Yeah, that'd yeah. be amazing. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, um, be brilliant. yeah. But before we go, um, Liam, um, there's a couple of things that I say to all my guests so far. Anyway, um, what um, what do you have like a favourite quote like in Doctor Who? Like I know they're all good, but do you have one in particular that kind of relates to you, maybe, or how you feel mm. about it? Uh, oh, that's a really good question, mate. I don't, I couldn't tell you. Um, or your favourite line, maybe. Hang on, you might have to cut some. I'm after. I have to think like two, like five, ten, an hour later. <laughs> um, oh, there's one that really relates to me. Um. Oh my god! There is so many. I, I I honestly couldn't say. I think the one that stands out for me, which I really enjoy. It's not necessarily a quote. It's more of just what. It's more of a memorable line. It's like um, they died. The Time Lords. All of them. They died. I mean, I'm, I'm probably missing so many. I just can't think. They died. The Time Lords. All of them. They died. And you know that leaves me. It's taken me all these years to realise the laws of time are mine and they will obey me. I love that line because of the power and the thing. There's so many. I just, I can't. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. It's hard, isn't it? Um, yeah. To, to think of a good quote and or a good line because there's so many good ones. Um, I don't want to go. A good man goes to war. Um, a demon run where a good man goes to war. Oh, my God. Yeah, you you said some really good ones because that is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I've you've been waiting an hour for me to have thought of an actual really one that stood yeah. out for me. I can't think yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah, hopefully we'll be getting some more though. <laughs> we'll remember hopefully. one. Time. Hopefully soon, mate. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like I think like what what I, what I enjoy about doing a series like that with my my podcast uh, main relates around autism. And Crohn's and talk about people about my journey, but doing a series like this, talking about um, Doctor Who with people, um, um, relating to autism as well, because with autism, Liam, it's all about hobbies, it is, and I, 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 know, I love it. And just like I think talking to you has been really nice. Um, yeah, it's really nice today. to you as well. Today, it's nice to other Whovians, like people who yeah. enjoy it. And it's nice because obviously, you mentioned like the autism and Crohn's and stuff, it's, it's something for you to. To do it, it's something that you've loved watching, and it's something that we can both relate to in the sense that that we both love that show. And it's something which is um, is personal to us for different reasons, yeah. and stuff that we can we'll look back on for the rest of our lives and think, oh, that was something we watched when we were younger, you know. 
yeah, yeah. But we'll we'll definitely do more things together, Liam. I think because uh, definitely, mate, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, for, for, thanks, Liam. It's been awesome chatting about Doctor Who. Um, it's and... awesome, mate. I've loved it. I've absolutely you. loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, mate. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.